past paper questions. Question one here is mainly a linked, link, a linked list question, but we start off by asking for a four marker to explain the difference between a stack and a queue. Now there are obvious key difference here, a mark for each principle plus one for the description. A stack uses the last in first out principle. In a stack, the last or most recent item of data to be added to the stack is removed first. That's the most obvious thing about a stack is how you take data out of it. Adding data to a stack is known as pushing, whilst removing data from a stack is known as popping. Okay, a bit of extra detail for you there. A queue uses first in, first out. In a queue, the last or most recent item of data added to the queue is the last to be removed. Again, that's the most clear thing about that. And you can have some credit if you talk about pointers. But there, really what we're looking for is stating last in, first out, and first in, first out, and explaining what the detail of those are to get your four marks. Part B, we have the simplified description of a linked list there. Redraw the linked list after the data item E has been added, noting that it's in alphabetical order. So the way in which we're going to get E in is E is going to have to go between C and G. So the easiest thing to do is draw that box down below and adjust the pointers from C to point to E and the pointer from E to point to G. So there's still a continuity of the pointers there. Uh, the mark there is for the node in the correct place and a mark for both arrows to and from the correct nodes. Now, I don't think you would have lost a mark if you'd drawn them in a complete straight line again, but it's best to drop it just below to show where you are going to enter it. Part two, redraw the amended linked list after the data item C has been deleted. So what we're looking for here is if you remove C, then the pointer from A must point to E. So you can remove it completely if you redraw in the diagram because we're not doing the, the array-based illustration here, we're doing the simplified diagrams. Another question here, all about binary trees, and this is your classic question because look how many marks they can get out of just a few different parts. So first of all, it's saying a binary tree structure is designed to contain strings and uses the following rules. The left pointer is earlier or in the same position and the right pointer is later. Now we didn't really mention in the same position uh, when we were talking about the original data structures because it didn't come up. But essentially the rule is that the same position tends to go to the left, but it doesn't really matter. As long as the system has implemented it so it works consistently the same, whether it goes to the left or right is not a particular problem, but they would need to tell you in order to give you some sort of idea. If they don't tell you, you can assume it goes to the left or they're not gonna deal with it in this question. So we're gonna start a binary tree from those animals. So we can use the initial letters to make it clearer. So we start with G, which is the root node. Duck is less than, so it goes to the left. Fox is less than duck, but uh, less than goat, but greater than duck. Bear is less than goat and less than duck. Ant is less than duck, less than bear. Cat is less than goat, less than duck, but greater than bear. Leopard is greater than goat, and there's nothing else there, so it just goes in there at the moment. Owl is greater than leopard. Mayfly is greater than goat greater than leopard, but less than owl. Insect, greater than, gr greater than goat, less than leopard, and there's nothing there, so we pop it in there. Jaguar, greater than goat, less than leopard, greater than insect. And finally, emu, less than goat, greater than duck, less than fox. Now, the marks here are a bit mean. You get a mark for the root node, so just put in the G in the right place and then a mark for the rest of it, which is where actually a lot of the effort comes into it, which is a bit mean, but there you have it. Part B, carry out pre-order traversal and give one use of it. Well, you'll remember that pre-order traversal allows us to go on the left-hand nodes, first of all, writing the nodes down as we encounter them. This gives us G, D, B, A, C, F, E, L, I, J, O, M. And your marks for the uses are to copy a tree, because we get the data out in the same order it went in. To count the number of leaves, which fine, yes, but it's probably the same thing for all types of traversal. And the final one, convert expression tree to prefix notation. So it's the notation we use to describe a tree is the same sort of data we use to copy it. Let's see then, in order traversal, if you remember in order traversal, the point is it ends up in alphabetical order, so we just stick it down in alphabetical order. Uh, the main thing is 
sorting or searching the tree because it goes through it in the correct order so you'll be able to find things much quicker. But printing the data out alphabetically is an appropriate answer as well because it is essentially sorting the data. Okay, what about a post order? This question's done all of them. Well, a post order is gonna give us A, C, B, E, F, D, J, I, M, O, L, G. And the point of this one is to delete or undo a binary tree. We can get rid of elements much more easily by doing that kind of traversal. It's also good for stack-based programming in that we can take this data structure and, and store it as a stack or manipulate it in a stack method. And it allows us to convert postfix notation, what, this, what we saw before, to an expression tree, which is a different kind of notation. Which is a different kind of method of describing your tree. Question eight then. This is the only hash table question I could find in the past paper selection. An online retailer offers a large range of stock items. They use a hash table to store details of the stock items in their computer-based stock control system. Each stock item has a key value. Explain the operation of a hash table and why the time taken to perform search and insertion operations is not affected by the number of stock items. So, hash tables store data in an associative array and uses a hash technique to generate an index where details of stock items are to be inserted in the table. What we're saying here is that a hash table takes the data creates a numerical value for it and identifies where it should be put into the table. It's an index calculated from the key value and the hash table provides direct access to the stock item and therefore it's not affected because it should almost be an instantaneous search. This is a linked list question that uses the form of an array and how the pointers are gonna to work to differentiate it. So there's a table with an unordered list of names. We start with part A. Explain the difference between searching for an item in an ordered list compared with searching in an ordered list. So this, this is reasonably simple. When searching an ordered list, we can stop the search when we find the item or at least find the value where the item should be. An unordered list, we can't stop searching until we've gone through each and every one of them. So an ordered list, a binary search could be used or any divide and conquer algorithm could be used in that place. Have a look at our table. Uh, copy the table, complete the next pointers column for number one to complete the list in ascending alphabetical order. So we want to put it in ascending alphabetical order. So what we're talking about here is we're starting with the A and going from there. So we've got Ahmed there, who's pointing to point of five, which is Brown, pointing to point of one, which is Jones, pointing to point of three, which is Lewis, pointing to zero, which is Smith, pointing to four, which is Thomas, which then nulls and ends the list. So all we're doing is really pointing at the next one in the order. And look at the breakdown of marks there. You get a mark for the start and the end and a mark for the rest of the pointers being correct. So do pay attention to the start and the end of the list being absolutely correct. Part two, add Murphy and Collins to the linked list and complete the next pointer column. So we're adding them to the end and we're adjusting them, as you can see there, to put them in alphabetical order. So we need to adjust a couple of pointers there in order to get that. So you get a mark for Murphy in six and Collins in seven. Uh, and then from there, Murphy pointer points at zero, Brown pointer points at seven and the Collins pointer points at one. So all those changes were necessary to include those things and get them back in alphabetical order. But you can see a decent few marks for that one question. Part three, complete the next pointer column to delete Smith. So if we're going to get rid of Smith, what we need to do is just remove their pointer completely. So marks for the Murphy pointer changing to point four instead of zero and leaving Smith in the original list. Remember, it doesn't need to be deleted from the array, it's just not accessible from the linked list anymore. Part C, draw a representation of a binary tree using the data items from question 11b as key values. So we're gonna go through it from top to bottom. Smith is our root node, Jones is less than S, J is less than S. Uh, then we've got Ahmed, it's less than Smith, less than Jones, and there's a space in the node. Uh, remember, I'm talking here less than being alphabetically earlier than and greater than being alphabetically later than. So Lewis is less than Smith, but greater than Jones, and there's a space for us to stick it in. Thomas is greater than Smith, and there's the space. And Brown, less than Smith, less than Jones, but greater alphabetically than Ahmed, and that goes to the right where we've got a space there. Marks the root node in level three, and level one and two being identical. So basically, you're getting a mark for Smith, a mark for Brown, and a mark for the other two rows being correct.